What's on your mind? Well, I am Peggy Doty from Doty Mechanical. Good morning, Michael Patrick. And I'm probably shocked like a lot of people at the results of this election, and I think it's going to be interesting this fall. And Gary Doty sitting, sitting right next to you there. Good morning, Gary Doty, uh, I'm not shocked at all. I mean, my guy came through, and uh, <laughs> so I'm real happy this morning. Ah, somebody who revealed who they voted for. Okay. Is that what you said? That's who you voted you want, for. Oh, you admit I voted for Rick, Rick Snyder. Okay. We'll get back to why in just a minute as we move around the table here. By the way, I noticed your uh, Mountain Grand Lodge and Spa shirt there from one of your Boeing trips, huh? One of my Boeing trips. Did yeah, you Did you go in the ago. water park? Uh, we we walked into it. We didn't go. We didn't participate, <laughs> but we saw it. More like spa goers at that stage. Right? Yeah. All right. A conference. Uh, <laughs> was it all work? I don't know. That how conferences work. Sir. Good morning. Craig Godfrey with Godfrey Weisberg, CPAs and advisors, and helping those, helping our clients get through the pitfalls of hopefully positive tax changes coming up in the very near future here. So You had to say that word, didn't you? Say that again? Tax. You had to say that word. I know, exactly. Hopefully uh, positive things, though. You know what? I, while you're standing there, I saw that uh, the White House spokesman, Robert Gibbs, has been defending President Obama's call to let the Bush-era tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans expire this year. Uh, what do you think? I mean, when, he, when they say wealthiest Americans, it sort of makes it like a pejorative. Like, what's wrong with being wealthy? That's right, exactly. And uh, some of the other changes that are coming down the pike here, the new taxes that were in the health care bill that was passed earlier this year are going to further penalize, um, you know, the wealthy and the people who are, you know, making more income in the U.S. Uh, but those are all actually the people that help create jobs and uh, help the economy overall. So why penalize them? Well, but the, the Democrats are saying the nation can't afford the lower tax rates for the rich. Well, and so that is something that's really going to have to be looked at closely because, um, you know, with all the spending that has occurred, we've kind of gotten ourselves into a predicament here. Mm -hmm. we, can't, uh, we can't further penalize people that, that help grow the economy. The president says that uh, he's determined to protect the middle class tax cuts and let those for the wealthy expire. Sounds like a... Now that's politics 101 right there, that's right? Especially right. if you're a Democrat. Right, yeah, exactly. So we'll see. Hopefully um, we can figure out a way to, you know, not raise rates at all and, you know, still somehow grow the economy. Why do we have to pick winners and losers like that? Like, you know, and we're not going to have a tax rate for the wealthy, but we're going to keep it for the middle class. It doesn't, just doesn't seem ultimately fair, does it? No, it doesn't. No, so, but uh, hopefully this fall we can find some answers to that. Are you the question. kind of person who uh, believes in a flat tax? Um. In some cases, yes, but uh, in other cases, no. So I'm kind of, you know, don't really have a decision on that. I mean, what I think would happen is if, if we did go into anything close to a flat tax, then that may be in place for one year, and then you've got the special interest groups that get involved, and then we go to a two-page flat tax. You know, some people refer to it as the postcard, you know, the flat tax. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's right, and then you get to two pages, then you get to three pages. Eventually, you're back to where we are today. So. Wasn't the number, it was Jack Kemp who recently passed away, in fact, when he ran for president all those years ago, talked about, if I'm not mistaken, everybody would have a 7% tax rate. That would be it across the board, and you just, like you said, you could fill out your tax return on a, on a uh, simple postcard, right. 7%. Yep, and uh, so and I think uh, Rick Snyder's uh, part of his platform is you know a flat what six percent for Michigan, and so it'll be interesting to see you know some more details on uh, that plan. So hmm. George Volman is chomping at the bit there. Well, and, yeah, well, that's right. Let's let's be we got to be careful here. But uh, yeah, this is George Volman of Volman Ford, and you know, two comments on what you just went over. First of all, I've yet to see a poor person create a job. Okay, mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And most of those Bush so-called tax cuts on the rich are the small business owners that create the jobs. Okay, so they're going to sit by the wayside like they did during the Depression and not create things. And they're just going to let the government run amok. So th that's, that's a question, and that's a concern. As far as a flat tax, it goes right back to what we just talked about. If you're doing a flat tax on the back of a postcard and, and you gain so many efficiencies and you don't have a bunch of people trying to collect money in Washington, which is unproductive, you can put them to work in something else, creating something else, that would be great. 
but the way they spin things in Washington, D.C. is that they, it would go from three pages to 10,000 pages, and now you got the same problem. My viewpoint is, is that if Washington, D.C. catches a recession or even a depression, the rest of the economy will recover. And that's really where my head's at. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You can probably say the same thing about Lansing. However, that would create massive unemployment, wouldn't it, among the CPAs like Craig Godfrey and, the, and the, all the IRS workers and so forth? Well, it may have a right, a, a give us a temporary slump, but then, you know, if the special, special interests get involved and we go to the two pages and mm -hmm. five pages and ten pages, then we're back in the planning mode that we're currently in. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think it'd be a temporary, probably, uh, situation. So. It's almost silly to talk about, isn't it? Because that's never going to happen. I don't think so. They've talked about it for many years now, and really, you know, it hasn't gotten any traction or anything. So, <laughs> yeah, I'd, I would say that it's not going to happen. All right, sirs. Jim Trebelcock from Trebelcock and Danik Financial. Good morning. Scott Danik, and I think we should talk about reducing spending before we talk about any new taxes. Because mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter what we do with the tax structure, if we don't control spending, we're going to be in the same problem regardless of what the tax is and what form it is in another five or ten years. So that's where I think the politicians fall down is nobody wants to rein in spending. But oh, well, go I ahead. definitely agree with Scott, and that's, uh, that's part of what I'm interested to see on, say, uh, more detail of Rick's plan is, um, uh, you know, 6% sounds good. Uh, maybe a lower rate would work, but uh, how are we going to control spending and reduce that? Well, we, we, we need to do it. I was just speaking with one of uh, Scott's friends that came, uh, the other Scott, Scott Farragut's friend that's up here from Texas, and he mentioned that he wanted to basically duplicate his business and his franchise that he's running very successfully in Texas. He wanted to do it up here in the mid-Michigan, Lansing, East Lansing era, area. And mm -hmm. when he looked at all the uh, hurdles he had to overcome, specifically the tax structure, he just said it wasn't worth the large investment, the risk he would have to take to create that. So he's going to stay in Texas and just, so I mean, there's 50, 60 jobs right there. I mean, that's not much, but well, and you get that in multiple situations. So that's why right. I just say, we've got to get the tax structure reformed, but if you don't reform the spending, you can't do well, anything and, with the tax And right. Pete Hoekstra had made that comment. He says, I want to get government out of the way of business. And you know what's really interesting is, is go to Texas and see what their unemployment rate is and look at how they're structured. And, you know, I know everything's bigger in Texas because i got a brother that lives there, but the, the challenge is, is they don't, they don't get in the way of their businesses creating jobs, and yet that's what happens in Michigan. So whoever wins the governor's mansion needs to, needs to understand that and, and get the heck out of business's way. Um, you're proud to live in Michigan, though. Your family lives here. You're committed to the state, it sounds like. I mean, how would you answer that fellow from Texas if he was, well, he is in the other room. What if he said to you, I'm still thinking about it. Should I come here? What would you say? Well, it's clearly one of the best states to live in, in my opinion. I mean, we clearly have more water. Everybody knows that. Um, I personally like the seasons, uh, and I think the colors, et cetera. I like the people in Michigan better than almost anywhere I've ever been. Um, I mean, you can have some of the East Coast, West Coast type of mentality, and that doesn't go for everybody out there. I know that. But there's just something about that Midwest, you know, roll up your sleeves kind of a work ethic. and. Uh, he even said it. He said, you know, I don't know why it's so difficult for the politicians to get it because you talk to these small-town mid-Michigan people and they all seem to get it. And that last night, um, I mean, it's not that none of us want to spend money on what we feel is important. Mm -hmm. uh, around the mid-Michigan area, there were uh, 19 of 24 millages were successfully passed. And that's folks like all of us just rolling up and saying, okay, I want the library. Or, the believe zoo. it or not, in Fowlerville, they have a mosquito spraying program that got renewed. Um, so we're not afraid to spend money on things that we feel are important. And if we think the money is spent properly, it's just when you start talking about all these different business taxes. Well, you, you were wonder. actually asked about that money, though. They actually asked you, can we spend mo your money on X in these millages? And, and at the federal level, you, you don't really get a say. Well, no, you, you just feel powerless Even the state level, because really. you see what the money goes to, and, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't seem to make any sense. It doesn't pass a sniff test. So you would sell him on the quality of life. That would be the, Absolutely. the only thing you would say. And Absolutely. quality of life comes with a price, though, too, Well, the quality it? of life and the low cost of living. I mean, it costs a lot less to live here than it does in a lot of parts of this country. So 